Okay, so here is how to connect. So that bottom, this bottom uh, wire is uh, VPP. Um, then you go, uh, second one is uh, hot power. Then third one is uh, ground uh, data. Um, the fourth one is uh, data or signal, I don't know. And then the last one is that um, clock. And then on a peak 10 200, you can see where they connect. So the that little uh, that little uh, dot right there at the bottom bottom right on the screen <laughs> um, is where VPP is, right? Is it? Oh no, that's not where it is. That's that's not used. That's not used on this one. The VPP is on the opposite side, and then uh, we have that. Uh, the rest, I don't know if you can see it. Um, the clock is right there uh, to the corner. Then this one is uh, data. Or, oh no, that's that's power. So that's power. Yeah, that's power. And then uh, here is our ground. No, that's not ground. That's VPP. Yeah. <laughs> so that's VPP in the corner. And then we go. Um, then you go ground, yeah, that, then you go ground, so VPP, ground, and then data, the, at, the, at the opposite point, right, there's data. Okay, I just wanted to mention about this uh, operating voltage. Uh, so on a PIC 10F200, uh, it says a wide operating voltage range 2 volts to 5.5 volts. Which is not uh, not true uh, because uh, when when I tried five volts, um, so I go to you know uh, I just click on the project name properties, uh, then I click on picket three power uh, and. Uh, when I selected five volts for voltage level, um, it uh, gave me an error saying that it's detecting 4.75 volts and at VDD and it can't supply five volts and it just didn't, wouldn't load the program. So it wouldn't run. Um, uh, on a 4.75 volts, it worked. Then, um, when I tried 2.15 volts because uh, the LEDs are hurting my eyes and the lower voltage gives dimmer LEDs. So I wanted to use 2.15 volts and uh, it worked uh, and the LEDs were dimmer, but uh, it only worked after I compiled it and, ran and loaded it on the microprocessor at 4.75 volts. Uh, so uh, when I tried to run it on a 2.75 volts uh, or 2.15 volts, uh, it uh, didn't run. Um, it said it couldn't, it was getting an uh, error on the address on the microprocessor and it just couldn't load, change the registers. Um, the lowest, uh, the lowest I found um, was like 3.75 volts that I could use where it would not only run, but um, it would actually uh, uh, change the registers on the microprocessor. So uh, that was a discovery. And uh, uh, the exact error thing it's, it gave me uh, was like um, the following memory area will be programmed program memory start address uh, and address configuration memory program memory address zero expected value a zero one received value zero fail to program device that's the error it gives me 
but uh, it works at uh, uh, 3.75 volts. That's that's what they use. Um, so. I can't really show it to you because I just connected some wires, um, but that's that's what happened. Um, another thing um, is the registers. Um, the for a new person, it's much easier to just use the whole eight digits. So this is the eight digits uh, when you program registers. Otherwise, you'll either get confused or something won't work, and you will just go back and change this anyways, thinking that maybe this is where you went wrong, even if you use the right the main clutch, main picture. But uh, basically, so each register is eight digits. Uh, so on 10F200, uh, for GPIO, uh, you only use the last three numbers. So this would be the GPIO zero. Uh, so, so the la very last number of the eight digits is GPIO uh, GP0, the second to last is GP1, and the third to last is GP3, GP2, sorry. And uh, basically, uh, to say turn on uh, GP0, it's uh, easier to just say GPIO equals uh, 0B0000. Zero 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 one semicolon, uh, and then it's it's then it's like really obvious which what you're doing even to yourself. Or you can also just uh, skip all the delete all the zeros after the B until the first one. It, so it's, it's the same thing. But uh, like I said, if you're just starting, it's way better to just use the whole eight digits because. You're going to be going back and forth anyways, thinking that you made a mistake somewhere um, when something is not working. So you might as well just always use this. That way, you know, it's it's the most correct way. Like, it's the most obvious way. There's nowhere to make a mistake here. Um, and again, uh, the, like, if you want to turn on uh, G, uh, the turn, uh, set the register where, uh, for the GP1, it's the second to last digit of the eight digits, and always in the front of that, it's zero B. So it's like zero B zero 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 one zero semicolon. Uh, but again, obviously, uh, you first you have to set it to output because it's either input or output, and you have to just dis decide which one. And so to set G GP one to output, you do trees GPIO equals zero B. Zero 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 one zero semicolon. Alternatively, um, you can delete all the zeros and it's still the same thing, which would be like zero B zero one zero semicolon. But uh, if you're just starting, you might as well just use all the eight digits, <laughs> um, not to confuse yourself. But uh, another weird thing about this freaking Mac processor that really confused the heck out of me uh, was you have to, you can't just use GP2. So GP2 is input out, but you can't just use it. You have to like, uh, this is what I did. So I, I said, so it can be controlled by multiple things. Unlike other GP, GP0 and GP1, uh, GP2 can con be controlled by many more things. And when you just said, started, uh, on a reset, the microcontroller sets it to be controlled by like clock or something else. So it's initially set to not be a, an input output. You have to change that. Um, and so what I did was I changed uh, OS C C A L bits dot F O S C four equals zero semicolon because apparently. F O S C four, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, if it's set to one, it uh, overrides that uh, GP two pin and controls it. And I, I wasn't sure how it is on the reset, so just to be safe, I set it to zero. And then another place is option equals zero B 
110111111 semicolon and basically that's uh that third bit where i set it to zero is another place that if it's set to one well it actually is set to one when you on the restart so when the microprocessor restarts it's set it is set to one um and uh it that that's why it's being controlled by something else so you have to set it to zero to make it um an input output and then you have to do the trees gpio to make it output um because i think once you set it the option it's by default an input <laughs> So you have to change that to output as well. But anyways, if you're new, like if and you just use trees GPIO equals zero B zero 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 zero. Uh it's it's a safe way to just set all the pins to output. <laughs> all the pins that can be set to output get set to output. Uh another thing, uh this watchdog uh config uh watchdog thing is not um it also messed me up quite a bit um so to to set it set it up you go to windows uh you go to target memory views click uh, configuration bits and then there you, you you disable it click disable it and then you click generate source code in output and it gives you the source code and then you can just copy the part that says prag hashtag pragma config wdte equals off uh, backslash backslash watchdog timer wdt disable and you copy that line and that's the code and then you just paste it in, into your code and then basically that sets the watchdog timer off and the what's bad about it is like watchdog timer basically resets the microprocessor every certain number of time so every, every certain time it resets it which i thought when i heard about it was like who cares it's probably like hours or days i don't know like i thought it was so long that it wasn't even gonna apply to me well it did apply because it was like freaking 10 seconds so like every 10 seconds it just reset the whole thing and i had no idea i just i just saw weird stuff going on with my circuit this server would like act up like i would have like no code and it would be moving <laughs> just because it kept resetting uh pins on the watchdog timer and it would like move the server <laughs> and i was like what what and i had like an infinity loop. so that and then on the leds basically it would just blink randomly sometimes every like 10 seconds but once i disabled the watchdog timer you know that solved that problem um so let's see uh, what other horrible things i had to <laughs> go through learning this stuff uh it's uh apparently so you want to use assembly uh really on this microprocessor uh i think well, i mean definitely because the problem with uh, c is it takes a lot more space way more space uh and the uh, assembly is way more efficient so after spending all this time in c i'm gonna have to like rewrite all this stuff in assembly because i ran out I'm, I'm, i don't have enough space the only way i can have enough space is if i use all three in out pins but i realized after i was able to set up everything that i'm gonna need my gp2 pin to be a clock <laughs> because the internal oscillator is too fast for me the four mega megahertz i need to slow it down like by a thousand or something because i, I need the function that basically runs once every two weeks <laughs> so i needed to delay for two weeks and the only way i know how to delay this thing for two weeks is is using an outside clock that is super slow uh, because the delay function here um is also um bad like it, it the biggest delay you can do is like 10 i don't know two minutes or three minutes or something something really short and uh you can just do a lot of delay lines because then again you run out of 
It's based on the microprocess. You're limited to how many commands you can give it through the program. And so basically, um, I, I'm going to need my GP2 pin to be uh, a clock that is going to be really slow. Um, and so I'm going to have to do this in assembly so that I, I can like fit all the, all the program that I have into using two pins because in C I can't, because the thing is I needed to output a code. So this is the code I needed to output. Um, or if you can see it, it's like, I don't know, 34 digits. So the code is 34, one, zero digits, and I needed to output it using LEDs. And basically, if I use three LEDs at a time, I can divide it into uh, threes. And it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So it's like 11 or 12. It's actually 12, um, 12 cycles. So it, it cycles LEDs 12 times showing like one zero 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 one one zero one and so and then that, that's that code is like a bit shorter because then in every line i set three pins to three leds like gpio equals zero b one one zero semicolon and then delay and then gpio equals zero b zero 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 semicolon blah blah but if i if i'm using only two pins to output <laughs> this code like increases by like 33 percent and using three pins right now it's already using 81 percent of the program memory using in c so um in using only two pins i have to divide the 34 digits into twos and that's like six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that that would probably be like like 17 i think there's 17 17 lines instead of like 12 lines and you know i run out of space um but in assembly i think it would be okay oh man I, oh yeah yeah delay so an easy way to also, also so delay is in microseconds right an easy way to change the seconds is you type in the um the lower line, underline, <laughs> whatever, and no, underline, underline, delay, uh, underscore, that's what it is, underscore, underscore, delay, underscore, milliseconds. Um, and then you control click on it. So you write that in your code, you control click on it, and it selects uh, the equation that is used for that function. So you copy that equation all the way starting from hashtag define, and then you you paste it into your code at the beginning and uh, you change the at the end of it it has divide by 4000 but you just change it to divide by 4 so a thousand times less uh, and then you just change m, m in the function delay ms you just change ms to s so delay s so, I don't know. that's what i did because uh, it's easier what i'm doing is in seconds <laughs> Not milliseconds. Uh, I don't know why. I'm, I'm not like trying to like program a computer or something using a microprocessor. <laughs> my my time scale is not microseconds. Um, so so yeah, assembly freaking a. Uh, so sometimes uh, this I get this problem is uh, I click build and nothing happens in the output and so the uh, the way I can fix the only the way the only way it fixes it for me is I have to click, click close all the tabs in the output <laughs> close the MP uh, the ID and then just restart the ID uh, then uh, I'm going to see if that works this time in a second. And then you obviously click on Windows, then you select Output. Ah, shit. Not Tasks. Uh, Windows, Output. And so then, then I try to run it, and yeah, that, then I should get my 
errors. <laughs> what? Why? Okay. Anyways, uh, I watched. Uh, so I started my exploration this time around of like processors uh, with the uh, 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 tutorial on YouTube, which was in uh, assembly, the breadboard tutorial. And I don't know, it seems just either outdated or something is very wrong. Um, basically, the way they said their watch dog timer command is, didn't work for me. I had to do my thing with uh, Windows, uh, you know, target memory, configure bits, then set it um, to disable watchdog timer, generate source code, and then copy, copy the command line from there. Uh, which is config WTT equals off. Uh, but uh, the one from the tutorial on YouTube didn't work. Then the next problem was the <laughs> hashtag include, again, from that breadboard tutorial, didn't work uh, for pick 10 f 200 uh, because they're, they're in their code, um, at least in the video, he has in hashtag include, uh, um, what is it? quotes p 10 f 200 that include quotes and that didn't work it said it couldn't find it so i found it and it in in my system it's actually uh the file is pic pick 10 f 200 dot ink so i changed i had to change that so it's actually the correct command in 2024 is hashtag include um quotes pick 10 f 200 dot ink quotes and then you do have your program start and then um this i have to the next line i have to figure out because the one in tutorial also didn't work for me <laughs> the, i don't know what, what the heck wh why but yeah the, I, I have to figure out how to set my register in move that move lw and then move that into option. And it doesn't seem to like me. But uh, yeah, so that 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 is that one is different too from the tutorial in 2024. Wouldn't work. So I don't know, that tutorial is just almost worthless because like none of the commands really work in assembly today. <laughs> okay, so this is apparently how you set set it uh, in assembly is the same as in C. So um, you don't use quotes. You just uh, you can just say uh, so. In my case, uh, I want to uh, set all my option register so that my GP two pin is set to GP two IO. Um, at least that's what I wanted to wanted to do um, before, and so. For that, I have M. Um, first, I have to move this uh, register assignment that I want into a uh, working register. And so I say 0B, which B stands for binary, and says that, you know, I guess next number is going to be binary. And then eight digits, you know, for the register. And so it's uh, 110111. One one semicolon, and so the command would be move m o v l w space zero b one one zero one 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 semicolon, and so now now that number that binary number that eight bit binary number is in the working memory, and then but I I needed. Uh, to set option register. That's that's where that uh, GP2 pin is being controlled by something else. And I need to, you know, un unleash it. So uh, I just type option in assembly and that does it. That basically assigns whatever is in working memory, which right now is 11011111, and assigns it to that uh, option register. Just like one word. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, oh yeah, and then uh, you do the same thing with the 
GPIO to assign the IO pins to the output, you have to set um, trace to zero and trace register again is eight digits. So uh, you can just do eight zeros and uh, that would do it. So the command would be you first do move LW, zero B and eight zeros semicolon. Um, and then that assigns all those zeros, eight zeros to the working memory. A working register and then next line you do trace gpio and then um that line basically assigns all those eight zeros from the working memory to um trace gpio register which is i think eight digits um yeah, I mean, it's eight digits for sure. So, but I mean, it's only using the last three digits for the GP0, GP1, GP2 for this uh, PIC 10F200. And so you do just do trace GPIO and, you know, it sets all these all these zeros, uh, but spe specifically the last three zeros to the uh, GP pin setting them to out. Um, the language in assembly and really C is case sensitive. So like if I have this end at the very end uh, of the program in lowercase, it will just pop an error saying it doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, it will give an error. So you have to have it in, in the uh, uppercase. And the same thing with uh, really C, if you have, uh, uh, let's say GPIO in like lowercase, it won't know what it is, but if in uppercase, it will recognize it. Okay, so um, one thing that you may want to do um, is set the uh, dark mode so that uh, you protect your eyes a bit. Um, I'm not sure how to do that in MP Lab, but uh, you can go to settings. Um, and then it's uh, in personalize, and then colors, and then uh, choose your mode, you have the dark mode, and then that will protect your eyes so that, you know, as much LEDs, you know, uh, killing the retina. Um, so another thing is the, uh, uh, if uh, the delay function, it, uh, basically takes up memory program proportional to the freaking delay. Um, so if you set the delay for, let's say, 400,000 instructions, um, it will take 10 times, this this line will take 10 times more memory, program memory, than if you set it at 4,000 and even less, you know, the less, the lower you go, the so, so you can see, it. I can demonstrate it, I think, um, if I just delete all these delays to 40 and then upload it. Yeah, it just drops, the program memory drops to 44%, but um, I don't know what to do about that because <laughs> I need long delay, so I'm, I'm just learning. Anyways, um, uh, let's see. So, yep, did that mention that defining an extra function takes memory? Um, yeah, like uh, I had this defined delay in seconds, so that I could delay, you know, how many seconds? Because uh, that's what I need is in sec on the order of seconds. But apparently, this takes like, uh, let's see. Um, like 7% of program memory, yeah, like 7%. Um, and then, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, character takes less memory than int definition. So if you want to define something and you use int, it takes like 2% um, less memory. Uh, 
or, or actually no, it takes like one percent less memory than if you do a character. And this is for 10f to find it with very little program memory. So yeah, just just uh, changing variable from int to character will take an extra one percent of memory. Um, but then again, defining the function to start with takes like seven percent. Um, let's see. Uh, flipping a single register bit on 10f200 takes like 2% of map program memory space. Um, and then, uh, that's it. Yep, that's it. Uh, on 10f200, uh, you can't say something like trace GPIO2 equals 1 to set GPIO GP2 pin high. Um, the, the two ways that I know how to do it is you do trace GPIO, which is an 8-bit register with the last three bits corresponding to uh, uh, the three pins. Um, and then you just do it that way. Like trace GPIO equals 0B0000010. Zero zero one zero or something to set the gp one pin pi um or uh, but if you do like just gp two equals one um it's just gonna give you an error another way is trace gpio bits dot and then um it's gp to trace GPIO. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That does, I don't think that works. Uh, trace G, GPIO bits. GP2 equals 1. I don't think that's going to compile. Um, let's see. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't work with that. Uh, yep, it doesn't have nice. So, 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 yeah, the only way I know how to do it is trace GPIO equals, and you, then you do 0b to say that it's going to be a binary number, and then your 8 bits uh, for the 8 bit register, but only the last three matter, with the very last one being GP, uh, GP0. Um, but this, this GP bits or uh, this bit, bits function actually works uh, on setting. Well, this is not, uh, so this this was for trace, so it's not to set it high or low, it was to set it input out. But for, um, um, for the G, so you can do GPIO bits, dot, and then it actually gives you uh, options that are available, GP0, GP1, GP2, and then you can do GP1 equals, and then that will set uh, GP one pin too high, just that one bit. Uh, so yeah, that, that it works there, GPIO bits, but it doesn't work with the trace function for this. And for the other my, microcontrollers, it's different, but for this one, it's took me a while to figure out. Okay, so if you wanted to delay for one hour, you can't use the delay function. Um, you have to use a for um, and so, like, so what I did here is uh, I have a, this define equation for to get it in seconds, get delay in seconds, and then x style freak is um, this one, and the 10f200 microprocessor is 4 million megahertz. So it's been used here, and then you have delay in seconds. And so to do to get 30 minutes, so this would be this four would be 30 minutes. It's uh, like 450 cycles of delay of four seconds. And so just four times 450, you end up with basically 30 minutes. Um, but I uh, I needed to be like a week or 10 days uh, because uh, I'm going to use it to uh, lock a code. So yeah, anyways, um, and that, so uh, it's like time block box, but for code. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> I needed to be for 10 days. Um, that's why I have to use four weeks to make it uh, possible. And you can't have like 10, delay, 10 delays because it still comes, it's the same thing. Like, so 10 delays of smaller number, it still looks at it as the same as one delay of big number, like it just adds them. So like, no matter what you do, it's just you can't use delay for a long program. If you need a program to run for like an hour or two hours or more, uh, you have to use for to extend the time. And there's only one oscillator in this microprocessor, so you can't choose a smaller oscillator. You might be able to do prescaler, but even that is only like a factor of 250, and that's not enough um, because the most you can get is like 10, 10, 20 seconds of delay, and that's it. <laughs> so, uh, even 20 seconds by 250 is not going to give you that much time. Uh, but for loop seems to work. Um, another thing is uh, you don't seem to have to use resistors with LEDs. Uh, I've been using them on and off. Right now, I have an LED in my circuit uh, running and it doesn't have a resistor in it. And it works just fine. Um, and because resistors really, really mess up the circuit, like they're bulky and it's just much cleaner without <laughs> resistors. <laughs> and uh, it's only like a 30 cents microprocessor. So I, I don't think I have to worry too much if I blow it. Well, 30 cents. <laughs> and I've been working with it for like two weeks now and I haven't blown a, a microprocessor or nothing like that. So it works just fine without a resistor on the LEDs. I mean, it's like, it's an LED. It's not like, a bank or something like you don't have to like worry too much about resistors. Okay, um, I figured it out. Uh, so to s um, make a subroutine or a loop or uh, something like that, uh, you do a semicolon, and then you can do um, go to main page some main. Um, yeah, so let's say uh, loop and then uh, nothing, and then we just say go to loop, and that will compile, um, assemble, assemble. Yep, uh, that works. So yeah, so we just need a semicolon and then that makes it, that makes it okay. Okay, uh, so to debug a bit your code, um, you can um, actually go to, uh, okay, well, let me just mention this first. Um, for some reason, this for function and GPIO, GPIO equals function, so these two command lines, uh, or whatever they are in assembly, because it gets uh, apparently translated into assembly first, and that's what actually runs the microprocessor. Like, these two things take a full second. So, because of that, um, I did some tests, and so, like, if I set this for loop to do, like, a 10-second delay three times, it's supposed to be, oops, supposed to be 30 seconds but uh, what ends up happening is 33 seconds and so if i do it for four four times it does 43 seconds five times 53 seconds six times 65 and so i just timed a bunch of them um yeah i timed a bunch of them and basically i just get like super clean line and then i just fit fit it uh fit it and apparently there's no offset so it's just like literally it takes this much longer so this for loop or delay or whatever instead of like 10 seconds it takes 1.076 times 10 
So I just have to multiply this by that number. And it, it it's a huge deal because what my code is supposed to do is it's a time, it's like a time lock, but it's a time code. So I'm going to lock a code for like 10 days or 15 days. Um, and so it's supposed to like show me the code in 15 days. And so 10% of 15 days is, is, is like plus minus a day, you know, a big deal. Anyways, um, that's my project, uh, to debug it, um, we can, um, do this. We click on this, uh, well, right now I'm in a simulation mode. Um, I don't have, I, I just connected my tool, uh, because, uh, I'm testing my board. Uh, my time code, time code lock, <laughs> it's running right now separately. Um, but, uh, so you, but you, you can do this, uh, while the, uh, microprocessor is connected, the 10F200 or whatever. And then uh, while it's connected, you just click on this. Um, okay. I, yes, it's, it does its thing, but I forgot to show you something. Um, okay, loading complete, blah, blah. Um, so how do you, so, so let's, let's say you want to pause right here. So you just double click it. What? Okay. There, oh, there you, you, so you double click it and that, uh, that's a break point. So once, once you do this, your microprocessor will run its thing until it hits here. And this is where your microprocessor will stop. So your three, so this is, uh, the last three LEDs on mine. So the last three inputs are connected to LEDs. So on mine, the three LEDs are on or would be on, um, and microprocessor will stop right here. So that's, and then you can do, uh, like more of them too. You can do, I think you can do like maximum two or three on, this microprocessor, but it depends on the microprocessor, how many breakpoints you can do at the same time. Um, so another thing uh, you uh, may want to do and I found useful is a stopwatch. So you go to window, um, debugging, uh, stopwatch right there. You click it and it will show up right here. And so that, what that will do is, um, to, to skip this line or, you know, to, to complete this command, you click, um, uh, is it in the debugging mode? Um, supposed to be right here. But, um, yeah, I'll check it, uh, in a second. Okay. I got it. Um, yeah. So to debug, um, you do, uh, let's see, let's finish this project. Uh, you click on uh, this thing built for debugging main project. And then, uh, you have your interrupt by, you know, double clicking here. Um, and then, uh, that's where it, uh, it stopped, right? Um, well, it hasn't stopped. We haven't run. So we built it for debugging. We, we did our breakpoint here. So, so we, the program will stop here. And in fact, microprocessor will stop here. Uh, if you have your microprocessor connected, it will download this code into the microprocessor, run it, and it will stop here. Um, and, uh, then you click right here, debug main project. And then that's where it stops. So you can see this arrow, it stops there. Um, and then you have your stopwatch uh, by going to again, um, debugging stopwatch. And then, um, and then you click on this step over. And for some reason, I don't know why it takes like really long time, even though I have a decent laptop. Uh, but it still takes literally like four minutes to, to just step over this. And then here it will show 10 seconds. 
and it will show exactly 10 seconds here. Um, and then it will uh, be on this next line. Um, but like I said, uh, this, this one cycle of this for loop takes actually like 11 seconds. So it like takes an extra second for to run this and this commands. Like, I don't know why seeing that it can run a command in micros in one microsecond, an instruction, why it takes 1 million microseconds to run GPIO on this. But yeah, so yeah, it will show up here. And so you can keep clicking this button and it will just keep going what line by line. Well, in this case, it will actually return back to the for loop and then go back one line by line as you click. Um, and you can see what was your microprocessor is doing. You can also like set your um, breakpoint right there and then your microprocessor will stop, stop there and then um, your LED will, so three LEDs connect to the three output ports will be supposed to be one uh, zero, like high, low, high. And then as you step over, your LEDs will change on the microprocessor. Okay, I take it back. It's super buggy. Uh, so I just stepped, um, stepped this once. Well, I went through this loop once and it already gave me 30 seconds. So like it gave me 10 seconds here, 10 seconds here, and then like 10 seconds here. And then now it's, you know, on this one, on the last loop, because this, this is going to loop twice. So it's, this is, this whole loop is 20 seconds on a re on, when I connect my, uh, 10 F 200, it's actually 22 seconds or so about 8% longer on that real microprocessor, 22 seconds. But this stopwatch in the simulation mode is, is giving me, uh, exactly 10 seconds. And then each line, like it, it's already at 30 seconds and it's still in, in this for loop on the last run. So it's, it's really buggy. Uh, I know it's not 30 seconds. This whole for loop I've timed at 22 seconds. So yeah, I mean, use this stuff, watch at your own discretion, knowing that it's going to be a little bit off <laughs> in, in real life. Instead of like 10 seconds, probably more like 11 seconds. And then it's also like super buggy. I don't know why, why it's gave me 30 seconds so far. Um, I mean, whatever. <laughs>